Hello everybody, it's me, The Vern, here for the Cinema Recall Podcast, doing a quick little video for our YouTube watchers, which I think is probably maybe two of you. I think two people actually watch this show. Uh, but anyways, folks, hi, it's me, The Vern. And uh, since we're in the midst of a whole corona outbreak and whatnot, and a lot of cats are staying at home, I thought I would entertain you with some of my collection and I don't want to go into too much details about these discs but these are like these are my criterion and blu-ray features uh blu-ray dvds and whatnot so starting off the bat we have Barry Lyndon 1975 feature directed by Stanley Kubrick I know a lot of people out there don't really talk about this movie that much because it's not really well talked about in Stanley Kubrick's filmography uh but I think this movie is absolutely gorgeous to look at it was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, it's got great cinematography. Every scene in this movie looks like a painting. Um, so if you're a big fan of this movie like I am, you are going to enjoy this special feature because it talks a lot about the cinematography and the way that uh, they're able to do a certain scenes. So, Bear Linden. Next up is Dazed and Confused, a Richard Linklater feature about the lives of high school students and junior high school students during the last day of school. Uh, this movie is a lot of fun. Uh, great soundtrack. Um, I liked the documentary. I liked all the audition footage that it has. I mean, the movie itself is about two hours long and the special features uh, probably far surpass that. So, really great movie. Uh, you can watch it. You can just watch all the special features on random and that's a fun thing to do. Uh, yeah, a lot of great stuff. And there's even a huge booklet in this that also is a lot of fun to read. I mean, guys, look at the thickness of that. I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge thing that has like just different articles about the movie. I mean, gosh, you're reading this is going to be about as long as the movie itself. So yeah, Dazed and Confused is a great, great movie. All right, moving on from there. Uh, Detour, this movie I bought on a whim because it was on sale during Barnes & Noble sale. I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know anything about this. And I watched it, and it was really pretty good. Uh, it's about a man who's trying to get home to his girlfriend. And uh, he gets into a little confrontation with this woman on the road. And she kind of blackmails him into helping her out. Get, she, excuse me, get some more money. Yeah, it's a good little feature. Good little noir feature. Uh, featuring uh, cast members that I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, good movie. Next up is my favorite Greta Gerwig movie, uh, Frances Ha, which was written by her, Greta Gerwig, and directed by Noam Baumbach. And I know a lot of people out there really love her, her features, uh, Lady Bird and her adaptation of Little Women. And I know a lot of cats out there like Noam Baumbach's last feature of Marriage Story, but I just prefer this one more. It's about a woman who is uh, trying to understand her life and trying to find out where she wants to go. Uh, it's got really great uh, black and white on there. And I think this has probably my favorite Adam Driver performance as well. Um, I like the special features, uh, the conversation with uh, director Sarah Pauly, and Greta Gerwig is great. Uh, same thing with Noam Baumbach having a conversation with uh, Peter Bedanovich. But I really wish this one had a commentary from Greta Gerwig and um, Noam Baumbach. That would have been kind of a cool thing to see for this. But yeah, Francis Ha, good movie. Next up, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, Terry Gilliam movie, Giant Depp, Benicio Del Toro. Uh, this one's great because it's got documentaries about the making of the movie, but it also has uh, documentaries about Huntress Thompson's life, and I love the commentary that, you know, with Terry Gilliam, and you have commentaries with uh, Giant Depp and Benicio Del Toro, but the commentary with Huntress Thompson and the producer of the movie is really, really cool. I mean, that's probably, probably my favorite feature on this Blu-ray is that. All right, moving on. Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I think is the first uh, stop-motion animated film that Wes Anderson has made. This movie has a lot of cool features. 
Um, it has a Reedin, uh I think it has a Roald Dahl himself reading the Fantastic Mr. Fox to you. So if you've never actually read you know, the book before, you got that on there. And one cool thing that I didn't know about this movie is that Wes Anderson had all his cast members like act out the movie for real. So we actually had cast members be on set as the characters acting out scenes before they recorded the dialogue. And they did that to help out the animators. So yeah, really cool thing. Yeah, fantastic, Mr. Fox. Next up is The Last Days of Disco. Uh, now, <laughs> I've seen... This is part of a trilogy. And I've seen the first of the trilogy, which is Metropolitan. And I've seen this one, but I've not seen Barcelona. And this movie is set in New York about uh, two women going out to distros, finding out who they really are in life. Uh, yeah, it, even if you hate distro music, and I get that, the way that it's used in the movie is really kind of infectious. I gotta get some water. Oh, vlogging is hard. Mm. All right. So next up is Police Story 1 and 2, Jackie Chan. Uh, now, I've seen Police Story 3 first, but at the time I had no idea it was Police Story 3 because it was called Super Cop. And I found out years later that it was called Police Story 3, that there were like two other movies. I'm like, well, I've never heard this before. And there was a local theater called the Triline Cinema. And uh, they had a uh, 35mm print of Police Story. So I was able to see that. And that was really kind of cool. And so right now, i am uh, got, uh, yeah, so got the special edition of Police Story 1 and 2. Special features here are really cool. There's even one that has director Edgar Wright and talking about Jackie Chan on a podcast. There's an alternate version of Police Story 2 on here as well. And it's cool because it looks like a 35mm print. Uh, but I don't need to tell you about the story. It's Jackie Chan. He's a cop. He's fighting criminals. He does all of his own stunts. And they are amazing. Uh, the mall chase at the end... Uh, there's like just a whole slew, even the beginning with the cars going through the village. Man, this movie is just an action lover's dream. So yeah, definitely, definitely check this out. Please story one and two. Next up here is Punch Drunk Love. Uh, Adam Sandler feature directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, co-star and Emily Watson, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, you know what? Adam Sandler is a weird cat because he can make really good dramatic movies such as Punch Drunk Love and Uncut Gems and uh, even Funny People. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's hard for me to say which one I prefer more because I mean, Punch Drunk Love and Uncut Gems, there are just two different characters. In fact, you could probably do a whole class of studying Adam Sandler's acting. And I think that would be kind of cool. Go from his early years to his later years because he has shown to be a very much an impressive actor performance. Uh, Punch Rick Love, he plays a shy guy who uh, has seven sisters and he's starting to find love for the first time. Uh, probably probably my favorite Paul Thomas, Thomas Anderson feature is because it's at like a short 90 minutes and I love that. Uh, special features include an article by Miranda July, interviews with the actual cat who did the whole pudding scheme that Adam Stanley character does in this. Uh, there's like a little short film. Being the fact it's on Blu-ray, uh, the cinematography by Robert Elswitz and John Bryan's score just really, really puts it up on another pedestal. So yeah, Punch Your Glove is there. This one up here is The Red Shoes. Now this movie I really kind of bought on a whim just because I heard so much about it and everyone talked about how great it is. And it actually is a really, really fun good movie. Uh, the cinematography is stunning. Um, I think this is a good double feature with this and Black Swan. Uh, yes, they're both about ballet dancers, but it's about how the depths that they will go to to achieve fame and success. And they both kind of go through that. So yeah, really, really enjoy The Red Shoes. Good, good movie. Uh, yeah, uh, great 
store, great cinematography. That's it. Good movie. This one up here is Umbrellas of Shareboard. And this is a movie that... And uh, I'm missing one of my... Oh, okay. Sorry. Umbrellas of Shareboard. Let's go back here again. Uh, really, really good movie. Uh, yeah, it's uh, all sun. All the music is sun in this. And this is a movie that I did not like the first time I saw it. Uh, first time I saw it, I just could not get into the movie at all because every word was sun. And my 13-year-old brain just couldn't really handle that. But I've learned to appreciate this movie. I think the colors is just absolutely stunning. But yeah, Catherine Deneuve is great. The songs by Michael Grant also great. In fact, uh, wait, okay, yes. I like this movie so much that I even have it on VHS. Yes. And I probably wore out this VHS copy for many years. And I'll probably wear it out again uh, later on. But I thought this is an absolutely gorgeous movie. And the Blu-ray is really great. Uh, featuring a lot of great interviews with the cast and crew of this movie. But yeah, freaking love it. All right, folks, moving on. Actually, no, I got one more left here, and I thought I lost it. Video drum. And I'm actually going to open this up because this shit looks pretty freaking awesome. Uh, this happens to be my favorite David Cronenberg feature. Um, if you don't know the movie, uh, James Woods plays a sleazy cable TV producer who comes across this signal for this new program called Videodrome that features like nonstop like torture and other things right there. Uh, so yeah. But look at this. Isn't this cool? This is so cool. All right. Look at that. They actually made the DVD case look like a beta match tape. And I just thought that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, he start James Wood's character starts to have hallucinations after viewing this program. And uh, starts to change his body in a way. So yeah, great movie, Videodrome. Uh, that leads me into my Blu-rays, or not Blu-rays, my DVDs. I'm going to be short with these. So I got uh, Band of Outsiders, John Luke Darts feature. Um, I still need to own uh, Breathless, but some money to own. Uh, but good, good little movie, good little French New Wave feature. Next up is Betty Blue. And this is another movie that I bought really just kind of on a whim. Um, it was on sale, and I saw there's a cute girl on the cover. Really long feature, about three hours, three hours long. And it's about a man's relationship with a woman who appears to be eccentric at first. But as it goes on, you realize some of the psychological problems she has. Uh, if you watch this movie, warning, there's like a five-minute explicit set scene at the beginning of the movie, and if this came out today, it would be rated NC-17. But all in all, good movie, uh, good use of colors, music in there. Yeah, good job. And the only actor I recognize from this is John Huzon Glade, who is in the movie Le Femme Nikita and Killing Zoe. I don't recognize the girl, but she's cute. <laughs> all right. Beyond John Malkovich, Spike Jones movie, John Malkovich, you know, John Cusack, Traveling to John uh, Malkovich's brain. Got uh, Catherine Keener, Cameron Diaz. Good movie. Blowout, which I think is the best performance that uh, John Travolta ever has done. And this might be Brian De Palma's best movie as well, too. Uh, big fan of, like, you know, like, Carrie and Scarface. Even the first Mission Impossible. But, yeah, this far, far surpassed that. Great movie. Breakfast Club. John Hughes classic movie uh, about the four teenagers stuck in detention. Uh, this special edition is really kind of cool because it's got like uh, commentaries from Anthony Michael Hall and Judd Nelson, and it's got uh, cast interviews back then as well as now, and it's got even like a podcast episode with uh, Molly Winwald that talked about the movie. Uh, but yeah, iconic movie, can't go wrong with it. Do the Right Thing, uh, I said before in other shows that I think this movie is an important landscape of American culture. Um, you don't know the movie, and you should. A group of residents are uh, 
their group of residents, different cultures, class together on the hottest day of the year. Uh, this DVD features commentary from Spike Lee and the cast members and crew. It's got the uh, Fight the Power music video uh, by uh, Spike Lee, directed by Spike Lee, Public Enemies, Fight the Power. Yeah, really, really rich stuff. And a really kind of long documentary talking about the making of the movie. Really cool. I know they, they just released a Blu-ray edition of this that has even more special features. And I should get this up, but I'm not going to right now. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Uh, Ghost World, uh, very cool movie, directed by Terry Wyckoff, uh, starring Thor Birch, uh, young Scarlett Johansson, Steve Buscemi, um, high school, kind of like outca- high school outcasters uh, during summer break after high school, and I remember reading the Daniel Klaus comic, and I think it's kind of cool that it has the actual comic here, little little mini reprint. Of Ghost World for you to watch, to you list, watch, and see. I like the special edition booklet uh, just because it talks about how the movie was marketed or mismarketed to people. And look, there's even a cool section that shows you like uh, how this movie was going to be marketed to, uh, I guess, a teen crowd or whatnot. Cause this came out like in 2000, and I know this like on the heels of like. Uh, Cool intentions or something like that, even though it's nothing to do with that. They just kind of want to go over that teen vibe, that hot topic, alternate teen vibe and whatnot. So, yeah, good movie, Ghost World. Next one up here is Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Freaking amazing movie, uh, great soundtrack. Uh, the band that I was in for a while, uh, Victory Riot, we used to do a whole bunch of covers of songs from this movie. And, yeah, I think just from the first song I hear from this movie, I'm just hooked. And I'm interested in knowing everything about this character's story. Uh, This movie has really good documentaries about Hedwig and how it went from a really low-grade stage play to being a movie to being a big, like, Broadway hit. And so that's really kind of cool commentaries as well. Next up is a movie that's just like really batshit crazy, but it's awesome. It is House. Uh, just really crazy Japanese movie about a group of girls who go to one of their aunt's house and just crazy shit happens. My gosh. Uh, this movie has like a few experimental, sh- experimental shorts from the director itself. Yeah, just wow. This is a movie, if you want to have a Halloween party, you gotta show house. This movie is just bonkers, batshit fucking crazy. I love it. All right. I Married a Witch is a movie that I just bought on a whim. And uh, it stars, and I'm gonna like Veronica Lake as a witch who gets involved with this like man who's got a uh, uh, fiance. Fun movie. Fun little 1940s camping movie. Uh, I just I learned later on that both stars of this movie really hated each other. Uh, but yeah, I still think it's a good movie to watch every Halloween or so. Put this on with Hocus Pocus. Yeah, great little movie. Lady Snow Blood is the movie that inspired uh, Kill Bill. And this movie is... It's good, but it does run kind of slow. This is another movie I bought on a whim because it was on sale. Uh, I do like the first movie way more than the second one. There's actually the two movies in this. Um, but yeah, you <laughs> during the the main theme song for the Crest of Lady Snowblood, you'll recognize it as being used in Kill Bill Volume 1. So yeah, good movie you know, about a woman who uh, was raised to take vengeance because her mother and father were killed by gangsters. So she's known nothing but revenge from the day that she was born. Good movie. All right. Fuck, I need water. Oh. Oh. All right, folks. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, now, next one I have on here is The Lure. The Lure was on my... The Lure, the, fuck, I'm bit of my thumbs here. The Lure was on my list just because of that bot art and the description uh, that... Um, as a twist in Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. And that is about a... Uh, they're gonna, it's about cannibalistic mermaids 
who join a pop band. Think of that. Cannibalistic mermaids that join a pop band in the 80s. Yeah. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about this. I think the songs are really kind of cool. They're really kind of catchy and fun. So that is The Lure. And if that premise doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. Um, I do believe this is streaming on Criterion Channel. In fact, all these movies, I'm pretty sure they're going to be streaming on Criterion Channel at one point or the other. Next one up is Mulholland Drive, which is probably my favorite David Lynch movie of all time. I mean, I have a big soft spot for Wild at Heart and for Blue Velvet. Uh, but this is the only movie of his that I just like to watch over and over again. And I used to watch it all the time just because I was trying to figure out what the hell it was about. And now that I've got some sort of like, you know, I guess understanding of the plot, now I just watch it just for the fun of it. And this one too, like, you know, all the ones does have a pretty nice thick booklet that goes into, you know, how this movie was once like a pilot TV series or like a TV series or a pilot for a TV series. Sorry, I bought my thumbs there. But yeah. But it goes into that. It's got some great photos across the way. Yeah. I freaking love Mulholland Drive. All right. Coming to the end of your folks. Next one up here is The Royal Tenenbaums. Another Wes Anderson feature that I think is a shitload of fun to watch. Uh, Gene Hackman, Angelica Houston, Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, yeah, and I love the fact, too, that it has, like, a diagram of the house, you know, and I'm not going to show it that to you right now. Oh, yeah, I can. Maybe I can. Look at this. Look at this. Ugh. But, yeah, it's got a little, like, uh, diagram about the house and all the rooms that are in there. Which I think, and I'm holding this upside down. Fuck. All right, but yeah, look at that. I mean, that's that's really kind of cool. Now I know that I had like a a DVD. This is DVD, but I had like an original DVD edition of this at one point that I lost, where this artwork was a little bit bigger. But yeah, still very cool all the way. There it is, Royal Ten Bombs. All right, and then the last of my Criterion. Uh, DVDs is The Young Girls of Rochefort. This is another movie I brought on a whim. Only watched it once. Uh, it's from the same director of The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. And this one is just a straight up musical comedy. Um, if you've seen The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, you know how things become sort of dire in that one. That's not the case with The Young Girls of Rochefort. Um, I don't think the songs are as memorable as The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Uh, but it's it's fine. It's a fine, fun little, campy little romance movie. Uh, yeah, and I don't really know all, all special features, interviews, I guess, with some of the cast and crew on there. But yeah, that's it. And that's really kind of it for my Blu-rays and DVDs of Criterion. I got a few uh, Laserdisc Criterion, like, for example, Akira. Great animated movie. I don't see. I don't need to say anything about Akira. It's an icon. It's a classic. Uh, go ahead and listen to the Cult Fiction podcast. Talk about Akira on the latest episode. So yeah, Cult Fiction podcast or Cult Fiction cast. <coughs> Check that out. All right. Next up is the English Patient, and I'm starting to see that the director of this movie, Anthony Mangella, recently passed away. And that kind of surprised me. Uh, was a big fan of his The Talented Miss Ripley. But kind of sad to see the guy did pass away. But there's the English Patient. One of a whole bunch of awards. Eh. It, it's okay. Uh, I got this because I got it as a gift from one of my friend's dads. And he had that in his collection. So I watched it. Eh. It's okay. But it's part of Criterion. So I don't want to post it. And then last is West Side Story. Um, I know that Steven Spielberg is going to be adapting a remake of this, uh, which is, I mean, I mean yeah, it, it can be done, kind of weird, but this movie is so kind of iconic and ingrained in pop culture. Uh, I don't know if you can find it, but I was on a podcast called Wasting Poorly, where we did a scene in review of this, and if you can find it, I actually do scene in that, so... I don't know why you would. All right. And then to top it off, I just wanted to 
post a quick video about some of the special edition steel Blu-rays that I had. So I've got the Big Lebowski. I'm not going to do a review of this. just want to show you how cool that looks right there. And I'll even open it up so you can kind of see it. Bam, look at that. Not cool. And then next up on my steel books here is Heather's. I mean, look at all, look at all freaking cool that is. Um, this, this, the distance of this is not that much different than other Blu-rays that came out. You know, the only thing that I'm very upset about this movie, I'm not really super upset. Um, I kind of wish it talked about the musical of Heather's and had like a little excerpt about the musical because I think that musical. Is a really, really good remake. Way, way better than that failed TV series that I think it was Spike or Paramount Networks was trying to release out there. But that's a cool thing. Uh, Matrix, not a huge thing. But I just like the fact that it has like a nice little booklet with it that talks about you know elements of the movie. The cool thing about this Blu-ray is that it has commentary from critics who hated the movie. And I find that shit to be absolutely amazing that I did that. Okay. There it is, Matrix. Uh, Gone Girl. David Fincher feature. Great movie. Roseman Pike is amazing in this movie. Ben Affleck does a good job. But what I love best about this is that it comes with a book. A little children's book. Uh, because Amy in this movie, her parents are authors and she's the, I guess, inspiration for them to do you know books so yeah there actually is a whole children's book like an actual legit i'm not gonna do a good job showing this to you on camera like i'm doing right now but yeah you can kind of see yeah i mean they are working this actually good i mean they actually made this look like a legitimate children's book so yeah darn girl i got this blu-ray just for this and I, i'm glad i did it's also got a really cool commentary track from uh, David Fincher. And then last up. My gosh, look at the mess I have here. Last up on here is Weird Science. Uh, John Hughes movie. I mean, my God, that's a really cool. Uh, nothing, there's nothing really too much to say about this. But I think Arrow did a really great job with this Blu-ray. <sighs> Here's the cool thing about this movie, folks. Is the fact that it has uh, the theatrical version the extended cut, which I, I there's like maybe like one or two see like one or two moments of the movie, but nothing you really miss. But the cool thing is that this movie has an edited for TV version of the movie, and it's really kind of cool how you get to see certain words that were deemed too offensive be like bleeped out or changed. Um, I would love it if other movies did this, like for example, Pulp Fiction. I would love it if they actually did release the TV cut of this movie. Um, yeah, but that's kind of a cool thing that has. It actually, it actually has Weird Science, the TV cut of this movie. My gosh. All right, so that's it right now for my collection. Let me know what you think of these movies. Uh, did I skip over any facts about these that you wanted me to cover or whatnot? I'm not sure, folks, but I'm hoping you're all staying safe. And uh, avoiding large crowds of people. Uh, go home, stay a movie. Maybe I recommended a movie to you that you want to see. Um, but anyways, folks, that's it. Uh, there is actually a new episode up on our podcast page. Actually, there's a lot of new podcast episodes. So head on over to like Anchor or Spotify or Google Podcast, Apple Podcast. We are Cinema Recall Podcast. If you just type in Cinema Recall Podcast, you're going to find... Our shows on there. I think even if you tape to Cinema Recall, uh, if you go onto Twitter, please visit us on social media there. We are at Cinema underscore Recall. And then on Facebook and Instagram, we are Cinema Recall Podcast. Anyways, folks, I'm the Vern. Gonna send off right now. Uh, I'm hoping the camera here is gonna see me and look at my face and it's gonna be kind of distorted. But I hope, I hope you're having a great day and be safe out there during the whole coronavirus, all right? And I'll talk with the cats sometime later. Bye, everybody.